Thank you very much for inviting me here in beautiful uh, Carcassonne. Uh, my name is Patrick Olsson. And uh, I'm from uh, Sweden. Uh, I'm a, a lecturer in landscape architecture at the Department of Landscape Architecture at the Swedish Agricultural University uh, in Alnap, which is close to Malmo, Lund, in the southern part of Sweden. Now I will talk today about the aesthetical aspects of the Swedish avenues through time. And lots of the information that I will give to you today come from my PhD thesis, which you see here on this slide. Uh, both sides of the road, the avenue and the landscape in Scania, uh, 1700 to 1900. And uh, if I do like this. So, uh, I'm a, by training a, a geographer, a human geographer, and I've specialized in historical geography. Uh, and I think it's really important in order to understand the avenues of today, uh, we need to look back in time. And so, this will be a journey back in time a little bit. And we also, I think, need to understand uh, these questions, we need to dis discuss these questions in order to understand the avenue of today. How has man viewed the landscape, the idea of landscape, nature and culture, aesthetical and practical ideas, the avenue and the organizational hold, and I will also address the landscape of promise and illusion, which I think the avenue is, is, uh, can be used uh, to illustrate that, and I have one example of that uh, as well. Uh, so first, uh, interesting etymologically, uh, the word avenue exists or existed rather in, in the Swedish language and it meant, it derives from the Latin word uh, advenir, uh, meaning, basically meaning uh, in the Swedish circumstance a road on which you arrive to a place, uh, often a town, and, and I'm talking now how uh, people addressed this uh, aspect in the 18th century. So often a, a town that is an approach road. Uh, and in, oh sorry, uh, not press too hard. So, and in the late 18th century, these approach roads were addressed by scientists and people interested in trees. And, uh, for instance, uh, scientist Fischerström uh, said that at least these avenues, the approach roads, should be bordered by trees. And why? Uh, because he wanted the avenues, the approach roads, to be aesthetically pleasing. So, by this we know that they, it was not uh, normal that they had trees, but they became uh, so to speak, avenues as we talk about avenues today. So a road uh, with, uh, with trees on both sides of that road. And one example of this is uh, the city of Kristianstad. Uh, this is uh, also in the late 18th century. We see the entrance roads or approach roads leading into the uh, to the old city of, of Kristianstad from the, both the north and the south. And uh, uh, these uh, uh, roads were mainly, uh, the trees along these roads were mainly willow. The most common type was willow. And uh, they had uh, could have cobblestones or uh, if we talk uh, 18th century, it was often paving stones, but it's, it's a way of enhancing the road, you could say, and, and also perhaps a way of uh, aesthetically uh, uh, improving the road and the landscape. Uh, at the end of the 18th century and predomin predominantly in the 19th century, elm became the number one tree used in avenues in the southern part of Sweden. And you could say that this was a reaction against the willow because the elm was considered a more aesthetically pleasing tree than the kind of 
uh, farmer's uh, willow. So you want to have a nicer tree that is often mentioned in the historical sources. But what about the, the farmer's landscape then? Did, did avenues exist there and how were they considered? Uh, well, uh, to begin with, uh, one must uh, realize that the most common type of uh, road material was gravel. And uh, so did really aesthetical aspects uh, exist in this landscape? Uh, and the sources say yes. The uh, county governors, scientists, uh, etc., they talk about this landscape. Eh? And one, one I think, uh, fun quote is by Trucelius, a person very involved in, in trees. And he says, forced by, the, by necessity, tempted by the use, and attracted by the aesthetic appearance. And he's talking about the roads which the farmers had to maintain, and he wanted them to be planted by, by trees. Uh, willow, uh, unless you couldn't find elm, lime, uh, maple trees, okay, use willow. And th this uh, had a great impact on the landscape in the 19th century where hundreds of thousands of willow trees were planted in the farmer's landscape. Uh, some uh, other aesthetical aspects. Uh, color. Today, I think, uh, and yesterday as well, we enjoyed the colorful avenues and the colorful skyline. However, in the historical sources, color is never mentioned. Uh, Whereas scent, the scent of the flowers of the trees are mentioned. And uh, I can see that uh, uh, regarding the type of tree, where, for instance, balsamic poplar or balsam poplar are, are used as a type of tree in, in these uh, avenues. Um, order will be my next uh, main aspect in, in the coming slides uh, in different ways. And order is perhaps the most important word uh, regarding aesthetical appearance. Uh, this is an avenue of elm and ash. So uh, order in this slide means that organizing the trees within the avenue. So you have a uh, every second pair is elm, every second pair is ash. There are other examples. Uh, there's one avenue called the Sunday Avenue. Every seventh, seventh tree is a horse chestnut tree, etc. So that is another way of, of using order. Uh, uh, so the ordered landscape, uh, and perhaps you, you could address as well ordered beauty. Because the ordered landscape was, a land, was considered a landscape in order was the most beautiful uh, as it was the most efficient. So those words are, are almost like synonyms. And straight roads uh, were uh, uh, a good thing and also wide roads. And both of these ideas uh, derive from Palladio and other Renaissance architects. And this could be one example of this showing the width of the road. Uh, why do you want to have wide roads? Well, this is a way for the nobility to impress the visitor. If you can have a road that wide, what can't you do then? So the aesthetical appearance of, of uh, taking ag uh, valuable agricultural land and making it to a road with an avenue was seen as very impressive indeed. And uh, you also talk about the, the whole landscape. The whole landscape should be in order. Here we have the estate of Erved's Kloster, and you can see the straight roads leading into the uh, main castle. You have the main castle here. And uh, leading from south, west, east, north, uh, and, it, and it, it becomes kind of more ordered as you come closer and closer. So you could say that it's a landscape of hierarchy. The more ordered, the closer you come. And this is shown 
uh, through the avenues uh, by, for instance, choosing a type of tree. So further away, you have uh, Scots pine, you have poplar, you have ash, whereas closest to the estate, you have uh, lime trees, and they then you have also uh, sorry, once again, regularly cut uh, trees. This is the tree that leads up to the church at Irvids Kloster. So they are regularly cut, and uh, this is lime, and this is the predecessor. It's the same road, but it is some 80 years ago, and it's a white beam avenue planted in the late 19th century, and it's. It's an example of how you ordered even the, uh, even the trees. You wanted to have this open roof, which you can see several examples of in the historical sources, whereas today it is, it is quite rare. This is another example. So, and then it doesn't matter which type of tree. Uh, you ordered the trees no matter which, which type it was. And another way of, of ordering uh, the tree is basically to make an, uh, a hedge of them. So here we have an example of how you could say that the avenue developed through time. Uh, you see the single, singular trees uh, leading in here. And they are uh, maple, uh, lime and willow. So you have the old kind of a simple tree, willow, being replaced now by lime and maple, and then closer, the more order than you have the hedge, the most ordered one. Perhaps it could have looked something like this, and, uh, and it coincides with the idea on both sides of the road, hedges of th hawthorn you were planted, here you walked as if uh, you were in an avenue, you were surrounded by this. Uh, that was the aesthetical uh, impression you wanted to have. And the ideas uh, of this uh, came from the garden culture, uh, but it also came from uh, the moats surrounding the old castles and the landed estates, where you have the willow trees. That is why you used the willow also in connection with uh, large estates. Uh, one example of that, uh, 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 the variety of trees is, uh, is tossed up, where you can see the, the willow trees here, close to the moat, and then uh, the nursery of trees uh, elsewhere in this estate. And then they move out the trees in order to uh, show the visitor that my property starts already here, and then they use the avenue to do to do so. Uh, another type of order is the uh, architectural order. Uh, that is, you have a road, trees, and then you have. Uh, another landscape element, and in this case it is the, the dike, and in this case it is the stone wall. And on both slides the trees are pollarded. Uh, the previous one, they were regularly pollarded still today, and this one, they ended the pollarding in the 1950s. Uh, and here is another example. Several of these black and white photos come from the 1930s, 40s, and uh, showing poplar, uh, which was also a very common tree in the southern part of, of Sweden, uh, perhaps especially uh, around Malmö, where the entire landscape with uh, lots of new uh, large farms or kind of small manors were erected by the new rich tradespeople, new burghers. They got these places, as, which you see here on this slide, and they were all connected with avenues and lines of trees, mostly uh, willow trees and uh, pollard, poplar trees. And this is another slide of, of uh, a landscape, uh, an estate showing the, the organizational whole, how you connect 
uh, the, the the different farms uh, and and the manor estate uh, here as well. And perhaps this slide is, is a good one uh, regarding uh, pedagogical. You see the road uh, approaching the estate, and when the estate uh, property begins, then the road changes into a straight one, and it has also uh, become an, an, an avenue. So the ordered landscape. And it's also, uh, you, perhaps you remember a little bit about this, the illusion and the, making it a promise. So when you travel along the, this road, uh, several of the roads and, and avenues leading into an estate does not have the estate uh, in, in front. Instead, it's a little bit on side of the estate. So it's, it's a kind of, uh, you prolong the wait to see the grand manor, the park, until you are almost there. And I think I will have this one as my, f sorry, uh, my final slide, uh, because I think this is a, a great example of illusion and probably one of the most important avenues uh, and I, I, I can say in Europe, uh, and this is really a, a, a European avenue as well, because the trees uh, came from a nursery in, uh, um, outside of Amsterdam, uh, brought to Sweden, which most of the avenue trees were brought to Sweden, uh, because we lacked, we had a huge uh, lack of trees, uh, even willow trees were collected from Holland, from, from Germany to Sweden. So here we have lime and uh, it's about 400 meters long and uh, the photo is taken uh, uh, 400 meters away and the trees are maybe we can say 12 meters apart and then when we are close to the estate they are maybe some 8 meters apart. So you have this illusion of the road being longer. Uh, also saying us that the avenue should be seen from the outside and inwards, which is, for instance, the opposite of how you see an avenue in England. The avenue is leading uh, from the inside to out into the landscape. So it's, it's the opposite. You, you welcome the visitor uh, trying to impress him all the time. Thank you very much.